Uh, so this afternoon we've got Norm with us from STK. Hi Norm. Hello. Um, we've gone over lots of the topics within um, a seller toolkit. So we've uh, done a deep dive into replenish and uh, the desktop. Today we're just going to have a quick chat about the settings, where you'd put your VAT, uh, where you put your details for your invoices. Um, so I'll pass it over and, and let Norm take it over. Okay. Hi Emily. Hi, right. So what we um. What a lot of people, new users of STK, miss is this question mark icon at the top here, which is your help icon on this site. This is where, if you click on there, you're going to get a, a menu item to go to all the help videos. And so many users miss this and ask a thousand questions, which are all generally answered in these, in these uh, videos. So you've got lots of videos here. There's uh, going to be added to as we go on. Um, a lot of the videos that myself and Emily put together are up here. Uh, links to her Facebook group. You must join Emily's Facebook group. It's brilliant. And then lots of other videos that I've done myself over the months. Uh, and these are all going to be refreshed and rehashed because SDK is forever evolving and it's always changing. I mean, it changes on a weekly basis. Sometimes it's small, sometimes it's quite big. So these, some of these um, uh, videos are slightly out of date, but they're still uh, pretty relevant. But they're going to be added to all the time. So just make sure you go to these videos and watch all of them. Yep. Uh, the other thing is Sorry, even, if, even if you don't need help, they're useful to watch so that you can maximize what you're getting out of Seller Toolkit. So you, don't, you may not have a problem that you need help to solve, but it will just give you an idea of how to use the yeah. next section. It, 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 I mean, there's, every, there's gonna be everything in those videos that you need that you shouldn't ask any questions at yeah. all because everything should be answered in those videos. So yes, it, it, if you think, you, you, oh, I don't wanna watch video, we try to keep them as short as possible, but they're, <laughs> The ones with me and Emily are quite entertaining. The, the ones with me and Emily are quite entertaining. It should help you get, get you through really quick. Uh, the other ones that when I'm just taking you through stuff can be a bit uh, boring, but they're, they're showing exactly what you can do with SDK. And there's so much that people that have, they, do you know, I, I, somebody uh, mentioned something to me the other day. says, how long has this been there? That's new. That's fantastic. I guess it's been there since the year, the day one. You know, if people didn't don't realize that you do these yeah. things and people don't realize about manual repricing, the amount of people that understand that you can do manual repricing yeah. and just base it on your ROI or a pound profit and send that new price to Amazon. It's amazing how people don't know how you can do that. So do, yeah, watch all the videos and I'll try and uh, alert people um, that whenever a new video is added or we've made some upgrade, you know, either through the Facebook group or through maybe a new alert system within, within STK. Um, the other thing is the, the account icon. So this is the icon, the head and shoulders icon, top right. You click on that, there's only two things at the moment. It's your log out or your settings. So settings, you, there are three things you can do at the moment. Uh, one, you can change your email address. So your log on email address, you can change that wherever you change your email and you can update your password to update your password. And that, that's simply just update your password in there and click update. And then what will happen if you update your details, you'll immediately be logged out and you have to log in again with your new details. Okay. Um, then there's invoice details. Now these are the details that uh, we will discussed on the uh, orders video, one of the last videos we did, where you can produce, if you're not VAT registered or with Amazon, or sorry, you're not VAT calc registered with Amazon, you have to upload your invoice within 24 hours to Amazon. So we've shown you that process, how to actually do that. But on your invoice, you need your company details, your store name and, and, and everything else that's to make that invoice legal. So this is where you set that up. So you've got your company name, your company name, which will show up the top left and the company address will show up on the top left box of your invoice. And you need to have them there. Now, that could be either question. your own company can name. Can I just could, yeah. a question? So um, for some people, their store name isn't the same as their company name. Which one goes on this invoice? It's up to you. It really is. If, 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 if you're, if you're self-employed, 
and, and you don't have a limited company, then it can just be your store name or it can be Norm Rogers Trading. You know, that it's whatever your, your business name is. So generally, you'd probably put your store name in there. If you're a limited company, you'd probably put your limited company name in there. But it really is up to you and how you want to, how your company, what, you, what your entity is, what your tax entity is or your store name. Simple as that. And then you've just got your business address on the two lines. Um, if you're VAT registered, you, you put your VAT name in, obviously. And then at the bottom, these three at the bottom are your legals if you are limited ah. and you need to have them in if you're limited. So this is where you'd have your limited company name, your company registration number and your registration address because the, that, that's the information that will appear at the bottom of your invoice. Oh, okay. So at the bottom of your invoice, you'll have uh, that number, registered in England, number, blah, 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 registered address, this address. If you're not fat registered and you're not limited, have, don't have a limited company, you leave all that blank. Okay. And instead, what it will show is at the end of the invoice, it will show um, such and such company, which is the, the, the company that name that you've given at the top there, is a non VAT registered company. Awesome. So that's there. And then you can update and change that around as much as you want. Play around with it, whatever you want to do. Play around with it. Go into any of your orders. Click on the receipt. Have a look at the receipt and see, does it all look okay? Does it, does it, is this how I want my receipt to look like? My invoice to my that customer receipt, to look like? That receipt is an absolute game changer for anyone. Yeah. So just, yeah. just to recap um, for someone who hasn't watched the other video, um, Amazon have brought out this wonderfully, um, yeah, hard work to say the least. The rule is... Um, you have to deliver a business invoice to a business customer within 24 hours of the item being shipped. So first of all, you've got to work out who's a business customer. Then you've got to work out when it was shipped. Then you've got to actually find one of these free generator, you know, um, invoice places and update it. STK has got your back. So um, in, in, the, in the orders thing, you'll have a little square. Um, I'm doing a talk for you. Sorry, not Miss Go, go, go ahead, go no, ahead. Yeah. A little, a little receipt icon, yeah. yeah a little receipt icon, and all of the all, that is pre-populated with this data, and it knows. I think you still have to upload it into Amazon, but it tells yes. you if it's pending, if it because you can't do it before it's shipped because right. it goes to ship. It goes to pending when they've paid, so you can't give someone an invoice for something they haven't paid for yet. Um, so, so STK will tell you what to send, when to send, so they'll populate it with what the item was, everything's done, you just have to just upload it into Amazon. But all of that information, this is, this is where it gets it from. So it's really, exactly. really important. Are there any, are there, do you know if there's any um, sort of negative um, results from not doing that? Are you punished and penalised or not? Do you know if Amazon yeah, tell us yeah. off for doing it? I, because I'm that registered, I don't know what the actual rules are, but I do believe it affects your performance um, code, uh, uh, score if uh, you don't do it. And, and uh, I don't know, maybe you could end up like in a lot of trouble. I, being I, suspended. I, I imagine, yeah, I imagine if you just don't, don't do it for quite a while, the other yeah. one they might let you if, go. If, but it's worth keeping up. Yeah, if, 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 if the fact that you're, they actually stipulate you've got 24 hours to do it, then you've got to do it 24 hours. And if you don't 24 hours, there will be repercussions. What those repercussions are is the worst case, worst case is you lose your account. No. Well, it's like messages. You've got 24 hours to respond to by a message, haven't you? I think it might go yeah. that way, where it's got a little thing on your on your um, on your main page your seller central where it says under 20 it counts down you get a little arrow and it says 12 hours and whatever so i think it's going to go that way they can't expect everybody to always know when a sale from a business customer has been 24 hours from shipped i think they're going to have to find a way to alert yeah. us but whatever yeah. stk has stk has got has got all this sorted and that's what this is yes excellent the the only next thing in settings at the moment is the vat settings if you're not VAT registered, do not touch this. The, the VAT registration date and the VAT calculations date there will both be blank. So you just leave them as blank. Um, if you are VAT registered and you're flat, if you're flat rate, then obviously click on the flat, the flat rate, enter the rate that you are on because there are different flat rates. 
depending on your type of business uh, and the, the year, the first year and second year. If you're in first year, I think you get it at 6.5% and your second year is 7.5%. Um, but there are different rates for different businesses. So if your business is, although doing retail and Amazon, but you're interested as a different type of business and you're just including Amazon, it might be uh, 12% or something. It's really, so you in your rate. That's a, that's a personal rate, basically. It's your rate that you have. So you have to enter your rate in there. Um, you, in here, this is the date that you registered with HMRC. Make sure that's correct. And this is the date that you told Amazon that you were VAT registered. Now there are two types, two styles of VAT um, of, of telling Amazon. There's one where you tell them that you're VAT registered and you supply them with a VAT number and they say, okay, from now on, we won't charge you VAT on fees anymore. And there's the second step, which is, or they can be combined step, which is being um, registered for VAT rate calculations. Now the date you put in here in this particular thing, it says VAT calculations is actually incorrect. It should be the date that you told Amazon that you were VAT registered and they accepted your VAT number. So mine, if you, mine is like four days or five days apart. So I think I registered on the 5th of the month, but it took me till something like the 12th to get my VAT registration number. And obviously I couldn't tell Amazon before I had the number. So there's a gap for me of about eight days or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But you did you go straight for VAT registration with Amazon, with Amazon Calcs? Yes. Yes, and I think most people do. And, and that's why I've got VAT calculation registration date there because I made an assumption that that's what everyone does, but not everyone does that. And I've been caught out by a couple of board users oh. whose VAT has been incorrect because of this. So there, are, there should be really three dates on here for those types of users. Most of us, this will work. It's, this will be the VAT calculation date because that'll be the same date you told Amazon you were VAT registered. Because why tell them you're VAT registered and not go VAT cal just is... Yep. Bon it's bonkers to me. It's, no it's, it's absolutely bonkers. It's a no-brainer. So you, you, we did this at the same time. You did. Everyone I know did, apart from one person, one SDK user didn't do that. And I had to change the way the calculations worked. And they, they had told Amazon that they were fat registered, um, and right at the beginning of their journey, and so they were in charge v, v, uh, fees on their VAT. But they didn't uh, sign up for VAT calculations until some months later. Now, that's what they've told me. I've looked at their, their data, and that's what it looks like that actually happened. If that's not the case, and somebody please tell me that that it can't happen, it's only VAT calculation date, because I've only ever known it to this way. So I've only had one user where it was that way around, and their calculations were screwed up. So I had to make some changes. So that date in there should be the date that you became that you told amazon that you were vat registered and you get fee you you don't have fees or uh, sorry you don't have vat on your fees anymore simple as that that's that date and it not like 99.9 .9 cases that will be the same as your back calculations date yep and that really that, that's it if if your um if your standard rate sorry flat rate you went 6.5 so, so let's say you were 6.5 and you were 6.5 from the very first date, but now you're going to go standard rate. Right? You leave all this as it is, and you need to now add a new one. So you've got the old one there and the new one. So you leave that as it is because that's your calculations from that period. Oh. And now you're standard rate. Right? Now you've gone standard rate. Right? Now you need to do, put in your new date. The new date for standard rate, right? say it's today. Which day? Oh, lucky 13th, Friday, Friday 13th. 13th. <laughs> yeah, Friday the 13th, say we went, we just got confirmation that we were VAT registered on the 13th to the 11th. Now, we're VAT we've already Amazon VAT calculation, that's already set there, so we now have to set that, and we just leave it like that. So then we do an update, and then from now on, then all your calculations will be at standard rate, or from that date. And these dates are backdatable, I mean, if you screw up on them and you you mess around, you can, you can set them to all the different rates and stuff, but... Um, if you get it wrong, um, you just change it. Okay. Yeah. But provided those dates are correct, STK's calculations will be 100% correct. If you've, if you've messed up on any of those dates, STK is going to give you a bit of garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. 
because it needs to know those values. It needs to know those dates. And then if first one you decide to most shut your business down a bit. So Sorry, most, if you, most of us will do it once and leave it. If most of us will be standard rate. So 99% of the people who watch this, will, if they go VAT registered, will be standard rate and straight on the VAT cows. VAT cow, VAT cow. <laughs> Um, so Not exactly. Exactly. No leaf. Set, set one, and then this it is gone, and you never have to touch yeah. it again. But it has got the flexibility for you to change all over the place. You can you can go so standard rate from six point five, then you add another one to go seven point five, then a year later you add another one standard rate. And then a year later, you say, oh, I'm not registered, that registered anymore. You're running a business. So you just you type in your deregistration date in there and your VAT calculation deregistration date. So as long as all those dates all tie up the reality of your VAT registration with HMRC and with Amazon, all the calculations will be spot on. The less I have to do with VAT, the better, personally. One day, done, gone. Well, the beauty of this is that you don't have to worry about VAT because you just have to type in a couple of dates in here and SDK does everything for you. Yeah, the one thing is that your COGS, you have to put in the right VAT rate for zero and 5% COGS in there. And that's about it. It's not that much. Once you get used to it, you just learn like what's what quite quickly. So, all right, it's not too bad. And that's our settings. Awesome. That's our settings. So um, I think something we need to do next time, maybe um, off the back of this, is to do one on users. Because if that's another thing where other people can use your um, SDKs so if you've got a VA or something. I think that might be a useful video for people. <laughs> Um, next one. Yep. yep. Yeah. In fact, some is, uh, I had that question again yesterday by somebody who's been using STK for four or five months asking, is there any way that I can use, um, they had two people signing on at the same time with the same sign on. And if you do that, it just bumps the other person off. You sign on, if I sign on with my, my account on my phone, and it bumps me off my laptop. If I okay. find it on my laptop, it bumps me off my phone. So you can only have one person signed in with one user ID. But if you, he said, is there any way of doing this? Because it keeps bumping us off. We had two people because it's always has users. It's on the main menu. No <laughs> so, matter it, people just don't use it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah just, the... just set up a user. Yeah. In oh. fact, yeah, yeah. So it's, you get three users with the basic, so there's plenty. So we so have we have three above you. You got you and three other people. Perfect. So we haven't we haven't talked about this for quite a while. Um, how would someone who wants to have a go at Seller Toolkit? How would they try it out? What what do you offer someone? Can they test it? Can they stress test it? Yep, you have, you get a fourteen day free trial, um, but if you use uh, any link, you will get a 20% discount. Um, so you'll also get two extra months of back data. With the standard, you would just get one month. So to give it a go, it's 14 days free. You, you still subscribe and you've got 14 days to try it. Um, you will love it, absolutely. Uh, I know I stay self, so but yeah, no, it's an eye opener. Everybody who joins do so. Yeah, it's an eye opener as to what you what it tells you what's actually going on. You you think you know what's going in your business, but you actually know, and you can't you can't hide away from the products that are less profitable. And it's quite a nice surprise when something which isn't doing too well actually you realise it's got a huge ROI. You just didn't you didn't know it. So yes. uh, perfect. Thank you so much, Norm. We will. I'm sure okay. we'll lots of videos, and we'll speak to you soon. Take care. Okay. Bye. Thank you. See ya.